Alright, so welcome to the Supercoach Knife channel. Uh, today, wasn't really planning on doing a video this week, but uh, the team list have come out for the first round of the trials and uh, I got too excited. So, um, it's a great time. Footy's back, uh, kicking off tonight there over at Mount Smart. Um, so I thought I'd just go through, sort of have a quick look at the teams and see how that impacts my thoughts on um, how Supercoach is going to pan out going forward. So uh, first game, as you can see, is the Warriors and the Tigers. Um, looking at both teams, it looks very much uh, like second stringers or you know fringe first graders at best, uh, which I guess seeing Tommy Talao in the team is a little bit concerning. <laughs> Based on that analysis, however, he is coming back from injury, so maybe just looking to, to build his fitness back up um, and make sure he is a go on that left edge for the Tyrox. Um, the only other player, I guess, that looks interesting or could be uh, this Luke Metcalf, the 5'8 for the Warriors. I'm not quite sure who they're looking to partner with Sean Johnson in at 5'8, so, you know, he is a big chance of that, um, or if he is, I should say that he's definitely one I'd look at putting in that 5'8". Schuster can easily swing up to the second row if need be. Um, I guess seeing Udoi Kamano is that's a little bit of a, a positive sign. However, as I said, feeling like this is the second string team, it suggests to me that it's probably going to start off the bench. Um, and they're just starting him in this game to get him some minutes. Uh, Knights and Sharks is the next one. Again, both of them seem to have second string. Well, actually, no, to be fair, the, uh, the Knights have named quite a few potential starters. So particularly, I guess, around their halves with Gamble and Hastings, their front row, Saifidi Twins and Braley. Um, they look like they're a go. Uh, the back row, I guess, is potentially missing Adam Elliott and or Jack Hetherington. Not quite sure what they're doing. I think they might still be a bit injured. So wait and see till next week on that. Um, I know there's a bit of talk about Greg Marzu as well, locking down a spot on the wing. Um, I guess, obviously, Dom Young's got one of those locked down. I'm not quite sure how the other one would pan out. Um Actually, I forgot, Caelan Palmer's playing 5 8, isn't he? So, Gamble's obviously second string. Maybe Hastings just wants a run. I'm not sure what's going on there. With the Sharks, again, mostly the, the fringe players like Rudolph and Had Hamilton Ueli probably start off the bench, you'd think. Uh, although, interesting, Cam McKenna's couldn't even get a start on this team, so who knows what Fitzy's thinking with that team. Uh, what's next? Rabbitohs and Sea Eagles. So again, sort of the, the reserve grade players coming out to play. Um, so I guess, you know, seeing Ben Trevojevic starting here suggests that maybe he's not in line for the the uh, second row spot in the uh, the full strength team. Um, on the, the south side of things, maybe Davey Mowali, someone I've been interested in, but again, if he's starting here, perhaps he's coming off the bench uh, next week and then definitely into the start of the season. So, a bit of a question mark there, but we'll see. Might be just giving him an opportunity to see how he goes from the start. Penrith and the Eels, so again, more of the same. Um, probably the, the thing that stood out looking at these lists was more so at the very bottom. Uh, Hayes Dunster was named, which I thought was a bit of a concern on the on the bench, but uh, also Junior Paul I was named. So I think it's more of a case of he's going to play maybe the second half, see how his knee is. So he's still a shot of that wing spot at the heels. Uh, but yeah, I don't think too much to report really from Penrith. I think it's only Jamin Salmon that's... Um, starting, and even then he'll be the bench utility going forward, you'd think, or that sort of player that can play on the edge and centre if need, or in the half even. So the Dragons playing the Saints. 
It's uh, St. George and the Saints. That's pretty interesting. But uh, I guess the interesting thing from this was that uh, Moses and Boys named it half. Um, and when you look at the rest of the, the back line being quite strong, with uh, probably th their first choice three quarter line, uh, this suggests to me that the full back, full back spot's just been held for Tyrell Sloan. Um, so I feel a bit more confident about getting him into my team. But again, probably the forwards are a bit more fringe. Uh, and then obviously the, the contenders on the extended bench having a go. Uh, so then I guess we start to get into the more interesting ones. So from Sunday... Uh, the Storm and the Roosters, and I say more exciting because there's a lot of, the, I guess, the more established NRL players that seem to be named in these teams. Uh, so looking at the Roosters, uh, obviously Tedesco is being rested. Um, I believe someone was named in that spot whose name escapes me um, that was looking to play left wing. It's probably in the description down here somewhere. Oh, Daniel Tupo, that too, of course. So he was named and then withdrew. Um, so Swali, obviously Joe Manu playing All-Stars game is in there. Or is he? He might just be rested, I'm not sure. Jackson Paulo, he'd probably get that wing spot. Kieran Walker, the halves. So this looks very much like a full-strength uh, trial team for Manly, other than, I guess, a few key players there resting. Uh, probably the interesting one here is the second row. It's just been announced that Angus Crichton is out indefinitely, so that could open up a spot alongside uh, Tupanua, Satelli Tupanua being out. So you'd think Nat Butcher, who doesn't seem to be named for whatever reason, uh, he'd get one of the spots, and maybe Egan Butcher's the other one. But uh, it would be great to see uh, Siwa Wong get it. Bottom dollar cheapie in the second row will have that. Uh, and speaking of second row cheapies uh, on the Storm, this is the name that stands out. It's even been bolded. Uh, Joe Chan. So obviously both spots are up for grabs at the Storm on the, the edges. Uh, and Eliezer Katoa being named on the bench uh, uh, away from the starting team suggests that perhaps... Uh, this is the way they're leaning. Again, pretty strong team. You know, Reem Smith and Justin Olam in the centres. Christian Welsh, he's back. Um, Josh King at lock. So, wouldn't be surprised if Joe Chance, but I'm not sure what's going on with Chris Lewis. Uh, for whatever reason, I couldn't find him in the Super Coach players list this morning. Don't know if he's not top 30 or what's going on, but um, yeah, he'd obviously fill that role pretty well also. But we want the bottom dollar cheapies in. Uh, so, Joe Chan, CO Wong, do your best this weekend, boys. Um, and yeah, again, not much talking about on the bench there. The Raiders and the Bulldogs. So, I guess this is the, the inspiration for getting onto this video was uh, looking at the Bulldogs team. And essentially, other than, you know, you can name the players that are missing and who's going to slot into those spots. Um, it's it's looking like their full strength team. So Braden Burns is placeholder for Hayes Perham. He's playing full Hayes Perham's playing fullback for the Maori All Stars, which is a bit of a giveaway that he's locked in number one at the Dogs. Uh, and also because of that, Paul Alamotti looks like he's locked in at the centre. So bottom dollar cheapy, happy days, get him in. Um, I think you know if they were looking at playing the proper team. Have a and burnt and swap, and they might even swap throughout. But it appears to me that they're trialling Avrilo and Alamotti in the centre positions in preparation for this season. Ockenbaugh is obviously a placeholder for Josh Addo Carr. Uh, and then the forward pack, uh, Viliami Kikia is not playing. Um, Jacob Preston, apparently he's got big wraps. Haven't come across much in mail of him as a Bulldogs fan. Uh, but I'm not the, uh, I haven't got my ear the closest to the ground, so sure you'll go all right. Um, again, you'd think if they were a bit more serious, someone like Andrew Davey would slide up there, but uh, again, this is looking like the bench they'll go with also. 
I guess the other one is Josh Reynolds. He's back in the top 30 uh, for the dogs, but uh, Matt Burton, he's just keeping the spot warm for him. Uh, and then the rest of the squad there on the bench, so the likes of uh, Skelton, Tapine, Franklin Pellows had a bit of chat, but obviously they're not uh, first calves off the rank for the dogs. Um, as far as the Raiders go, it does look a bit second string their side. Uh, Danny Levi's getting a chance to, to put his name up as a potential hooker, but obviously Tom Starling is missing from this list. Um, Trey Mooney, there's a bit of chat about him, but uh, again, there's a few forwards missing there, so I wouldn't read too much into that. The Cowboys and the Dolphins. So the Cowboys seem to have gone with the second string outfit. Uh, James Tamo named a start, which is interesting. I'm not sure if he's back from injury. I can't remember. Or if it's more he's going to be a bench player this season. Um, and so with the likes of... Uh, well, actually, they're over here, I'm pretty sure. Well, actually, not all of them, but... Len is out from the Cowboys and also... Um, Tommy Gilbert was the one I was trying to think of. So there is some minutes there somewhere in the, the forward pack for the Cowboys. Um, Highland Luke is out injured as well. Luciana Leilua binned. So there is definitely some minutes there. Uh, who takes them remains to be seen. Uh, but definitely, you know, there's probably not the uh, most likely. There's not a lot of these guys to consider. Uh, while with the, the Dolphins, they've gone pretty full strength, I think. I think Ozarko would play on the wing when Hammers back to play fullback. Um, Sean O'Sullivan will obviously play at the seven. Um, then their forward pack maybe is second string, so obviously the Bromwich brothers. Um, big fellow from South, so I've forgotten his name. Mark Nichols yeah, got it eventually. Um, those uh, Kafusi, Felice Kafusi as well. I think they've all got to come into that side somewhere. Uh, Tommy Gilbert at lock, so Ray Stone will probably slide back to the bench. Uh, so Tafare, the, the young uh, centre that everyone's been talking about, unless he plays the house down and pushes Aitken into the second row, looks like he's starting in uh, the Queensland Cup to start with. Uh, and then the last game, Broncos Titans, and again another sort of exciting looking lineup with the Titans, going fairly full strength. Um, so I guess uh, AJ Brimson needs to slide in here somewhere, whether that's at fullback or centre, uh, remains to be seen. Kieran Foran will probably get into the six to create a bit more experience in the halves, uh, but that obviously suggests that then Khan Pereira is locked in spot on the wing. Tanner Boyd, favourite to play halfback. I, I wouldn't go so far as to say locked in just yet. And the likes of Dave Feeder, Aaron Clark playing lock, so that looks like another good shout uh, for this season. Uh, and then I guess the rest there. With the Broncos, they've named some big guns as well. Reese Walsh, the Stags and Farmer, their starting centres. Ezra Mam, he'd probably be the favourite of the starting six, but not cheapy this year. Uh, Corey Pakes, named at nine with Billy Walters on the bench. So that might be something there as well, a little bit of a, uh, something to look at. And, uh, yeah... Don't think there's too much else. There's nothing else in the teams. So as I said, what does this all mean for my side? Well, we'll flick back and have a look to how it was uh, in the, the last video. Um, so I guess since then, the changes is looking at Dunster out because Alamotti must come in. So we've got a couple of bottom dollar cheapies there, which is nice. Uh, Mitch Kenny, I've gone off. There's a bit of mail that maybe Sony Luke will get a bit more of a share of the minutes um, and definitely more of the attacking minutes at the back end of the game. So I'm probably, I haven't got enough money, so I'll have to just take out Katoa just momentarily. 
So I'm going to join the gang and bring in Brandon Smith. Where is he? There he is. And, uh, you know, just flick you, mate. It's worth a bit more. But uh, Boyd will definitely be on the bench. Um, as I said, we've got rid of Katoa. Uh, it just doesn't seem feasible, given that it doesn't look like he's going to start on that edge. Uh, and also, given up on, on Pango. <laughs> Not given up on him, but... Uh, he was probably the other one missing from the Bulldogs team, and I don't know where he fits just yet. So um, what that means is I've got a bit of money for a couple of second rollers, and I'll go by ownership percentage. might be better. So my friend here, I'm going to go with uh, Luke Garner. Um, I know he's playing that left edge for Penrith. Well, that's the talk anyway, and they're so attacking. Uh, but I think a lot of that was built around Viliami Kikau and his ability to draw defenders and ball play off of them. So, um, not 100% locked in on that, but, I mean, it is cheap enough. Um, you know, if, if they can continue to, to kill it down that left edge, he'll be there or thereabouts. But I actually have a feeling they'll go more right side to Cleary... Uh, Martin, Crichton, Toe. Um, and then from there, you know, I've got to find someone else in the second row, which is why, you know, someone like Metcalf would be great. Swing Schuster up into the second row. Um, but, yeah, someone like Sean Bloor, maybe. He wasn't named in the um, Tigers side, so that suggests to me maybe he's in the first team. If he gets past Pup Lee or Bateman for our edge spot, I don't see it yet. Uh, next week could be completely different. Um, Trey Mooney, as I said, pretty popular, but probably just a cheap placeholder. Drew Hutchinson at 7%, that's pretty funny. I guess maybe the flick with Schuster's all right, but he's going to average 21, so you're not going to make any money out of him. Same sort of deal with someone like Salmon. Um, Murdoch Masilla, there's been a little bit of chat about. Maybe the dual position helps. But uh, again, if he pops up on the list next week, it would be worth a shout. Um, but yeah, I think for now, what, what I'll do, if I can find him, it's fair, it must be a fair way down the list. Not popular. <laughs> yes, I just search for it. So, get uh, Joe Chan in. Hopefully, he does get a run. 320. Didn't think he played before. Maybe he's come from England or something. I don't know what his deal is. <laughs> All right. Well, he's just a little placeholder. So, I guess it's whoever lands at edge spot. I could really put Katoa in there. Actually, I think that's probably what we will do, just for the purposes of saying that that is the, the edge position there. Um, don't know if I can get up to Tarek Sims. Oh, yeah, I can. Well, maybe we put Sims in that spot. He'd be the most expensive option um, that will get the spot. But um, obviously any money we save can go down that way. Um, and, yeah, so I think that that's how it's going to shape up at the moment. Again, it's only the first round of trials, so, but it is keen, or well, it is exciting to to get in and, and have a look and see the teams and see, you know, what the coaches are thinking uh, and try to try to roll with that. Um, but, yeah, I guess some question marks still on this team. Jack Hetherington, not sure what his role is going to be. Um so we might be in the market for another cheap front rower. Like I said, the likes of Mawali starting is a little bit scary for, for South this week as well, suggesting maybe he's not first choice. Uh, Hopgood playing 13 for uh, the Indigenous All-Stars, so that's good news. He's pretty much going to be locked there. Um, yeah, Tommy Talia, like I said, if he's playing this week, does that mean he's going to be a first first stringer next week or is it just getting fitness in what's going on not too sure um, yeah 
So, and then I guess the other option that I am tossing up, and feel free to uh, comment on this, because uh, yeah, it's something I'm not settled on, but all sort of pre-season I've had the Heinz Cleary duo locked in. Uh, but actually thinking of maybe fading one of them, more, most likely Nico Hines, just because he's worth a bit more money, so potential to drop a bit more. Um, and with that, what would happen is, I guess, something like... So Tanner Boyd would swing up to half-back. Yeah, by percentage, beautiful. Um, and then that would free up a spot to either, you know, bring in someone like uh, Josh Hodson. You know, he's definitely going to make a bit of money. Uh, don't know what the impact Mitch Rain's going to have, but in the past, Hodgson sort of then slid to lock. And then does that impact Jermaine Hopgood? Probably not. He'll play more like a prop, I suppose, anyway. Um, and then that also frees up some more money. So, I mean, I can... You know, might have to go up a bit higher in the front row. Maybe go straight up to an absolute gun. Um, like a Haas or Tarpany type character. I uh, could also, you know, if I don't want Sims necessarily, can put Schuster into the second row. Uh, and then, you know, I can have whoever I want at 5'8". So, you know... Few people getting on Adam Dewey, you know, you could have the set and forget with Munster. Um, like I said, Metcalf would be nice if he gets that start at the, the Warriors because yeah, if I search by uh, the position, he's the only one that's named at 5'8 for the Warriors. Uh, and then half back, you've only got Johnson and, and Volkman. So, um, yeah, so Johnson will definitely have one. And I guess, yeah, if they brought Metcalf to play 5-8, that'd be mint. If it's someone like um, Tamari Martin, well, maybe he's an uh, option at fullback. Uh, and then swing him there in six weeks if Turbo doesn't work out. Um, but saying that, I'll sort of swing back to the way it was. Get rid of the filter. So, Shulstar. Go board, put... Uh, Hines back in. Ton of Boyd. And um, do I have there? Tarek Sims. Can't find him. There he is. <coughs> and so I suppose if this was the, the team for round one, so I'll put uh, the reserve back on Hines as well. And uh, probably going to be Tanner Boyd for the fourth one. Um, but, uh, so that's, I guess, the state of play and how things are going. As I said, if you've got any suggestions of changes or improvements or any sort of extra information that I've completely missed, uh, feel free to throw it in the, the comments. Um, otherwise, like and subscribe to the channel. Keep the content coming thick and fast. Uh, aside from that, I'll see you in the next one.